So in September 2021, over a seven day period, I climbed Gran Paradiso and Mont Blanc. But to be straight up completely honest, I would not consider myself a climber or an alpinist. If anything, I am more of a hiker. But I'm willing to bet that if you're watching this video, you are probably in the same boat as I was. You've got some experience in the mountains, but you wanna take it up a notch and Mont Blanc is what you're setting your sights on. Well, I'm here to tell you that you are making an amazing decision. Climbing Mont Blanc was probably the most rewarding and enjoyable adventures I've ever gone on. I saw some of the most beautiful views that I've ever seen in my life. I pushed myself to my utter limits and had a blast doing it. I met great people, ate amazing food and made memories that I will cherish for a lifetime. But there are a couple of things that I wish I knew beforehand. So in today's video, I'm gonna be passing on some useful information and hopefully some guidance that I hope will help you on your Mont Blanc journey. So let's get started. Here are five things I wish I knew before I climbed Mont Blanc. Number one, you will not sleep. So I barely slept at all while I was climbing these mountains and that's due to a mixture of things. The first one and probably the most obvious one is the constant change of routine. Some days you're waking up at 2 a.m. to make a sunrise summit push. Some days you're waking up at 4 a.m. to get down the mountain in time. Some days you're waking up at 6 a.m. to do a summit push. Some days you're able to sleep until 10 but you didn't get to bed until 12 that night. So the constant change of routine is definitely a key player in the reason why you won't be getting much sleep on this trip. But there is a lot more. Every hut that you're gonna stay in on this trip are bunk bed, kind of bunk house setups so you are going to be hearing people talking laughing and snoring long into the night pretty much every single night and to go back to what i said earlier everybody's waking up at different times so you're going to be hearing alarms going off at 2 a.m 4 a.m and 6 a.m it's constant people are coming and going at all different times so pretty much action-packed for the whole time on top of all of that there is actually some official science to this there's obviously a lower amount of oxygen at higher altitudes which is said to directly affect the sleep center of your brain which will just basically lead to more frequent awakenings and just a general lighter sleep and if you want to look into more of that for yourself then check out altitudemedicine.org so to combat all of this and to actually try to improve your sleep on this trip then i would recommend bringing earbuds i would recommend bringing one of those airplane uh, blackout masks as well as a blow up pillow because not all of the huts that you stay in are going to provide pillows i know it sounds like such a small thing but like just setting yourself up to have good sleep while on the mountain is going to help you recover mentally and physically and you're just going to have a much more enjoyable time so don't make the same mistake that i did because i didn't bring any of these things i just suffered uh, and barely got any sleep throughout this entire trip. There's a couple of clips of me with the biggest bags under my eyes that I've ever seen, and I'll show them on screen now. It's especially important to get good sleep when you're doing this level of physical exercise, and I really did suffer on this trip. So don't make the same mistake as me and put the right things in place. So number two, the second thing I wish someone had told me before I went on this trip is that rocks are always falling. Skip this section if you want to. I know that I personally did close my ears and turn my head away from this kind of information. But yes, rocks do fall. And from the conversations that I had with the people in Chamonix and with my guides, the rocks seem to be falling more and more frequently off the mountain. On the first day of climbing Mont Blanc, my group had a run in with a boulder the size of a torso. It came bouncing and spinning and flying down the mountain right towards the middle of our column. Um, fortunately, as a group, we weren't tied up at that moment. So we were able to split in all different directions and get away from uh, said boulder. That rock was coming down so quickly and was so massive. Had it, had it hit anyone in our group, then that person probably wouldn't be on this earth today. I'm not saying this to try and persuade you. The trip was amazing, it was insane. It was probably the best thing that I've ever done. But I think it's just good to be more aware and hyper aware that rocks are falling off this mountain and they do fall off regularly. I did some research into why the rocks are falling more and more frequently off this mountain. And it can be attributed to the permafrost on the mountain slowly melting away. And unfortunately that is the direct cause of global warming. Of course, there's also the well-known death coulier where many people have been seriously injured or killed. Um, vegan ER nurse asked me on Instagram, how did I personally prepare for this section of the mountain? But the answer is, is that I didn't really. I tried to put myself in the best possible shape that I could. That meant that I went on as many hikes as I could and as many runs as I could. But I also deliberately went out with a adventure touring company that is co-owned by like one of the most famous world climbers, Kenton Cool. He's been up Everest like 13, 14 times. And that was a deliberate choice I meant. I knew with him being the founder of the company, I would be in very good hands. It was an intentional decision that I made. So I guess the point of me saying all of this is is that rocks do fall frequently and it's good to be aware of that but you've just got to do everything you can to mitigate that risk go with a well-trusted well-reviewed company you've also just got to trust your guide and accept that this is a risky thing to do and above all else you've just got to focus on the rewards the view and that feeling of satisfaction when you get to the top of this mountain number three guides won't stop 
So mountain guides have the fitness and climbing finesse of mountain goats. Trust me, these dudes go up the mountain quicker than you would have ever seen before. And they will be setting the pace for your climb. So for heaven's sake, make sure that you have everything that you could possibly need easily accessible to you because guides are not gonna waste their time or lose momentum by stopping or slowing down when you're climbing that mountain. And for large portions of this trip, you're gonna be tied to other members of your team. So you wouldn't be able to stop even if you wanted to. So I would suggest having obviously two big bottles of water in your backpack, but also just bring a small one that you can fit inside a trousers pocket. That way you won't have to stop if you wanna drink any more while climbing up the mountain. Another quick tip is that if you're gonna buy a jacket for this trip, I would suggest buying a jacket with tie up pockets. I've had to go near a hard shell jacket and it's awesome, perfect for hiking. But because when I'm climbing this mountain, you have to wear a harness most of the time. You also are gonna have, you know, various belts around you. So it's quite hard to access the pockets in your jacket. So that's why I would suggest buying a jacket with high up pockets because you can stash your phone or snacks or anything you want in there. And it's so much easier to access. And I know these things sound really small, but they all do add up to make a really big impact on your trip. And trust me, small thing, but it's gonna help you as you climb. I really struggled with this when I was doing the cliff scramble section. Um, I was desperate for water. I also wanted to take more photos and film us up this part where you basically have to zigzag climbing up this big, like basically a cliff. But unfortunately, I, you know, it was really hard to pull out my phone. It was really hard to get some water and I struggled in that moment. So don't make the same mistake as me and make sure everything is easily accessible. Okay, the fourth thing I wish someone had told me before is that cash is king. This is a short and sweet one, but what you need to know is when you're climbing these mountains, everything is expensive. So everything is normally double, sometimes triple the price it normally would be. For instance, a 1.5 liter bottle of water is something like 11 euros. I guess that's because it's really hard for them to get the supplies up to the mountain, but also just because they have a corner on the market. So just make sure that you are mentally prepared, physically prepared, but make sure your bank account is prepared for this trip because it's not cheap. And there is absolutely no way of getting around that, unfortunately. You won't be able to bring, you know, three days worth of water with you up the mountain. You will have to buy it from these mountain huts. So just prepare the bank account, prepare the ISO, whatever it needs to be, get it out of the main account, put it in the current account because you don't know how much money you're gonna spend when you're in these huts. You could be dripping with sweat and you might be desperate for water and you might get through two, sometimes three bottles a night. So yeah, just be prepared for that. Number five, this is the last thing I wish that somebody had warned me about before I climb on Blanc, is that your gear doesn't matter. You do not need to show up to Chamonix with every single piece of kit that you could possibly need because Chamonix is the most well-stocked outdoor equipment shopping center that I have ever seen. They have a North Face store, a Patagonia store, a Mammut store, a Decathlon, a Millet, an Arcteryx, literally you name it, they've got it. So if you don't have everything you need, then don't stress, just get to Chamonix a little bit earlier than your call time and you know, just go around the shops, get your crampons or your hats or your new jacket, whatever you need, just get it then. So don't stress and don't do any last minute online shopping because it's probably not going to get to you on time. Uh, and you can pick it all up in Chamonix anyways, which means it's less the lug in the airport as well. So, and you know, you're supporting the local economy as well. So that's always good. So yeah, guys, that's my five pieces of info. I wish I knew before I climb Mont Blanc. If you haven't seen it, go and check out my Mont Blanc climbing film. It just went over 10,000 views recently, which is absolutely crazy. It's a very like tranquil, very calm and relaxing film that documents my experience climbing climbing Grand Paradiso and obviously Mont Blanc too. So if you haven't seen that, go and check it out. It will give you a good perspective on what this trip is like and how the experience actually sort of plays out. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you found it valuable. If you have any advice for people who are about to set up on the trip themselves, then feel free to drop that in the comments. Or if you have any questions about the trip, feel free to drop that in the comments too. If you did enjoy the video, do me a favor and hit the like button. We are a small but budding channel and I would really appreciate your support. So yeah, hit the red button and join. Anyways, that is it. I will see you in the next video.